Along the lines of discussing some of the barriers to learning, the things that get in our way to really expanding our knowledge, to, to uh, applying knowledge, to getting beyond the protocols and the sound bites that really just prevent knowledge, um, it's this idea of snap judgments. I think it's really interesting, and there's, there's a couple of fallout uh, principles or, or issues with the snap judgment idea. So here's an example. <clears throat> um, I used to get people would, uh, they would uh, come up to me at something like an idea event. I started presenting for idea back in, I think it was 1994, at one of their early personal training conferences. And after a few years, well, I, I, last time I presented was last year. It was my 20th anniversary. <laughs> Getting old. Anyway, the, the funny thing was that people would come and go, I've been to all your stuff. And I'm like, awesome. I've never seen you at any of my classes. And then you go, no, no, no. I've been to every lecture you've ever done an idea. And I'm like, that's the least of what I do. But that's all they ever saw. And we have a tendency to think all we've ever seen is all there is. So I was... I was blessed by their dedication and the fact that they still wanted to see me because after the first time most people don't but <laughs> that it, it was funny that that you know I didn't know what to say I'm like well you know I I have a 20 day course that I teach with info you you come to this thing that's watered down and becomes more of a show than education it's the trailer for the movie and you watch the trailer and you're really sure you know how the movie's going to end, and the twists and turns in it, and the, the, the tra it's just an enticement, and it lets you know it exists, and it exposes you, to this, exposes you to this material and this thing where you're going, that might actually help me, that might actually help me help my clients, it might help me get past some of my exercise issues, injuries, whatever the case may be, but that's not the information, that's the insight into the fact that there is information to go out and commit to learning. So this snap judgment thing, I've also had people say, they come, up, they come up and they go, man, I love your stuff. And I'm like, what stuff is it that you love? You go, oh, like what you said about pull downs. I'm like, what did I say about pull downs? Oh, you know that they're bad. And I said, what? I never said they're bad. No, no, no. When you say behind the neck pull downs are bad. And I said, did I ever, did I ever use the word bad in that two hour lecture? Not once. That's not what I said. You don't love my stuff. You love maybe the way I present it sometimes. Sometimes you probably don't. You love your interpretation of my stuff. And very rarely, someone that's heard one of these trailers out there, they have virtually no idea what was really presented, the real context and the real theme. They take away this little snippet. And that's not bad. It's not wrong. It's just the beginning of education. It's the awareness that something's out there and so um, I don't know it's a really tough thing and I have I, I feel this way in, in, in a big way that you, this YouTube thing is very similar to that because it's, these are short little things and people go oh these helped me so much and I'm like it's, it's like if you need a year's worth of medication and you had one pill and it helped you so much cool then, then stay on it for the rest of the year especially if you're schizophrenic but that's a whole other subject so, you know, these, these things are not really education. They are the beginning of education. They are additions. They are adjuncts. They are uh, expansions of ideas. They are considerations, which may change everything you end up doing, but it in and of itself is not going to change you. It has to be more than that. It has to evolve and grow. Um, this idea that you get labeled, which is kind of an offshoot of the snap, the snapshot, the snap judgment thing. Oh, I saw this thing once where this Purvis guy was talking about calculating shear and it was really boring and it was just math so I turned it off after 10 minutes well you should have watched the rest because what we did was take that and figure out where it really applies in exercise and where it might not and is that even consistent with what we're told out there to be afraid of because we can't move without this force at a joint called shear it's not about a good or a bad thing it's about understanding it and where it becomes excessive. And anyway, the point is, I'm the sheer guy, or I'm the math guy. Now, if you were one of these people who was introduced to me, maybe you're a trainer, but your first introduction to me was via Bowflex instructional DVDs that I did for forever. And so it was, it was, you watched me train a consumer 
an average person, real life person, in how to do a chest press. And we spent 120 seconds on that instruction, two minutes, right? And now you know me as the Bowflex guy and the person who teaches chest press that way. Consider the context, consider the audience. You start labeling me as this thing. I've had people say, oh, you're the guy on these old <laughs> embarrassing videos that was just like, just barely like a couple years post mullet at this point in my life. But, you know, so you take this snapshot and it becomes everything. And um, that's, what I, that's what I'm kind of referring to as a barrier to education because we don't really look for what goes beyond that. What was before this? What led to this? What came after this? Where did this go and where did this evolve? In any subject matter we're looking at, and that really is important, that's part of the satellite view versus zoomed in microscopic view, because you zoom into details. Sometimes you get to pull, got to pull back out satellite view and go, why am I looking at those details? Where do they fit in? How do they apply? Kind of like zooming in and looking at where you are on the road right now, but the GPS idea that, yeah, and you know, this is how far you are from Albuquerque. But you should worry about this curve that's right in front of you right now. So there's those two perspectives that give you big perspective, big picture, small picture, details, and what to do with them. So I think those are really important parts of education. Um, the third thing I might throw into that is, is along with the snapshot thing, um, there, was a, there was a cool thing from a book, uh, Maybe it was Blink. It was one of the Malcolm Gladwell books. And, and some people love him, and some people like him, and some people hate him, and whatever. It's not the point. He's not the subject. <laughs> this example is um, where they were looking at the truth of this Pepsi challenge things because, you know, Pepsi versus Coke. Because if you were around when those commercials were on TV, and if you looked at their supposed research, in every taste test, Pepsi beat Coke in a blind taste test every time. What he pointed out was that it was a matter of volume, apparently. I wasn't there, I don't know. But the idea that if you gave somebody a little shot of Pepsi, they go, wow, it's really good. Wow, this Coke, I choose the Pepsi. Couldn't see it, right? You make somebody drink 12 ounces of Pepsi and 12 ounces of Coke, apparently the Coke won almost every time. So snapshot, versus a real life dose, if you will, a more expanded version of reality, a more satellite view is what else is there? Is that really all the information? We love sound bites. We love to narrow it all down. We love to label things good or bad. We love to label, that's the science guy, that's the isolation guy. Get this all the time when we're talking about strength training because to truly get truly, truly stronger, all the evidence shows you have to have a completely stable base, a bench to push against. Not standing here doing cables like this. That's fine for learning to do that, but it's not the same as being on a bench. They're not substitutes for each other. So people start to say, oh, you're the guy that doesn't like the wobbly stuff. You like all of this kind of exercise, non-functional exercise. It's like, wait a minute, so, so really? Did you see my video on progressing a balance board? Because it kind of one-ups everybody's version of how to learn, how to teach and how to learn the process of balancing, because this is a process of progression. So is it that it doesn't exist and you're gonna label somebody one way and miss out on all the other things they teach because you're sure you've got it? And there's the third part of this snapshot thing is you're, sh you're sure that's all there is. I got it. Yeah, I know all about it. I, I went to an hour, I know what he says. I left after 10 minutes, I didn't like it. Wow, and so everything else that you could have learned from that person or that book, you're tossing it, you're dismissing it. And sometimes that's okay. What I mean is, most of the time in life it seems like, maybe sometimes, we don't take on stuff until we're ready for it. It doesn't mean anything till we're ready for it. You can watch some movie and go, yeah, it's a good movie. You see it 10 years later, it's the same movie, but you're a different person with different experiences and you're going, man, I really, that movie means something very different to me now. In fact, I'm not even sure, was that line really in the original? It was, it was just, it fell on deaf ears at the time. It fell on uh, a background, that uh, uh, unfertile soil that didn't know what to do with it. Anyway, these barriers to learning are, are very important to me and I think they should be important to you. 
So we all, if for no other reason, take full advantage of the investment we spend, the time we spend, get the most out of our educational process, and become, in the end, very different versions of professionals or participants.